Welcome to another S&P 500 analysis. Today is May 7, 2022. Another wild week for the S&P 500. But after all said and done, the S&P 500 ended the week near where it started. So is the correction over? In this video, we will see what the sentiment and the market internal are telling us and what the price action of the S&P 500 and the major market indexes are setting up to do. So don't be fooled by the weekly close. Stay tuned. Now, before I begin, I need you to smash the thumbs up to help me promote this video on YouTube. And if you are looking for an unbiased view on the market, then click on the subscribe to subscribe to this channel and make sure to click the notification icon to turn on the notifications so you won't miss any future video from me. Now let's look at this weekly chart of the S&P 500. As you can see, another huge range week. For the week, the S&P 500 had a range of 245 points, but it only lost 8.59 points or 2.21%. After a 125 point or 3% update on Wednesday and a 153 point or 3.5% down day on Thursday, the S&P 500 ended the week almost unchanged. And I'm sure a lot of the talking head will spin this as a positive. So unless you only invested in the S&P 500 index, then you could say it was an unchanged week. Because the NASDAQ 100 did not do as well as the S&P 500. It was down 1.25% or 161 points for the week. The Russell 2000 also down 1.3% or 24 points. And the FANG index was down 2.21% or 118 points. So not everything ended unchanged or nearly unchanged like the S&P 500 index. So don't be fooled by those trying to be positive and spin it like it was a good thing. The volatility on the S&P 500 means there are a lot of nervous people in the market. And that's how the market generates despair to get all the weak hands to capitulate. It will give hope to those that are holding on to losses by these dead cat downs like the one we saw on Wednesday. Then it smashes those hopes by huge relentless sell-off such as the one we saw on Thursday. Later on this video, I will share with you another thing you need to pay attention to and not to be fooled by it. For now, let's take a look at the sentiment. On this sentiment chart, we see the fix is still up at the 30 level. Even on a huge post-FMOC rally on Wednesday, the VIX was still up at this 25 level. And the put call ratio remained throughout the week above 0.75. Although it did not get above 1, but it is hovering around the 0.9 level. So no relief in sight. Market participants are still very fearful and getting a bit bearish. And looking at the market internal, we see the up-down volume ratio was 14 to 1 in favor of the down volume on Thursday sell-off. The rally on Wednesday, it was only 7 to 1 in favor of volume. Although the S&P 500 ended the week almost unchanged, but there was heavy selling pressure as we saw on Thursday. On the daily advance decline, we saw 2,548 more declining stock than advancing stock on Thursday. That means more than 90% of the stock traded in the New York Stock Exchange were down. And on Wednesday's rally, there were 2,101 more advancing stock than declining stock. Again, more stock participated on the downside than on the upside. And looking at the New York Stock Exchange new high, new low, we're seeing the expansion of the number of stock making new 52 week low. On Monday and Friday last week, more than 600 stock make new 52-week low. Only 13 and 29 stock make new 52-week high, respectively. Another sign the market is getting weaker. And on the cumulative AD line, we see that it is making lower low, and the S&P 500 also moving lower. No divergence between the S&P 500 and the cumulative AD line. Now looking at the internal for the NASDAQ market, the up-down volume ratio was 4.6 to 1 in favor of the up volume on Wednesday, and it was 4.7 to 1 in favor of down volume on Thursday. 
So the up down volume was pretty even for both up and down day. But the daily advance declined telling a different story. There were 2,088 more advancing stock than declining stock on Wednesday. But there were 3,102 more declining stock than advancing stock on Thursday sell-off. And even on Friday, there were 2,432 more declining stock than advancing stock. So the advanced decline is reminding us that there is more broad market participation on the downside than on the upside. And to further enforce the NASDAQ weakness, take a look at this new 52-week high versus 52-week low. The amount of stock made new 52-week low continue to expand. On Friday, it was 1,099 stocks made new 52-week low and only 21 stocks made new 52-week high. And this is not a sign this market had made a bottom. And the NASDAQ cumulative AD line also making lower low, and the NASDAQ 100 moved lower, no divergence. On this intraday chart of the S&P 500, just want to highlight the up-down volume ratio. As you can see on Thursday with the sell-off, we actually saw 23 to 1 in favor of the downside. And then on Wednesday, we saw this rally the peak of this uh, up-down volume ratio is only 7 to 1. So from the sentiment and the internal that we have just reviewed, they are all telling us more weakness is yet to come. Now let's take a look at the price action of the S&P 500. Continue to use the weekly chart here. Basically, we want to take a look at the uh, big picture, the big trend, instead of uh, focusing on the uh, daily price action. So right now, we see that we've got an uh, outside bar here and with a uh, doji type of candle. And it did come down and took out the February low that we have uh, been waiting for. Along the way, we got a little bit of a dead cat bounce up and down and kind of suck a lot of the dip buy in. But eventually it did come down and uh, take out this February low. So right now, what we are looking at is to see what it continue to come down. And basically, you know, there's a gap here. There's a gap here that need to get filled. This gap is just above this uh, 4,000 level. And let's see what that level is exactly. That is uh, 4034.44. And the high of this candle is uh, 4020.63. Okay, so those are the gap. And keep an eye on that gap level to get filled. And eventually, we're basically looking for this thing to come down to this 4,000 area and possibly come down to this, you know, 27% uh, extension down at the uh, 3,900. That's on the downside. And on the upside, once again, if it come up, it's just basically going to come back up here to uh, chop around right near this uh, 4,270 area, 4,280 area. That's basically what we are looking at on the upside scenario is possibly get up here. But the downside is essentially down at this level here. And that's what we are focusing on for the coming week. And once again, it is still down in the correction territory. Right now, the S&P 500 lost a little bit over 14% from its high here. And looking at the NASDAQ 100, as you can see, the NASDAQ 100 is still in the bear market, down 24.28% from the high here. And right now, we're essentially still focusing on is to uh, come down to this uh, 12,000 area, and essentially this 27.2% uh, uh, extension on the FIB, and that would be somewhere around 12,050. Now, if we get a bounce, then uh, we'll probably uh, see a comeback and uh, test these lows here, somewhere around 13,026. And for the Russell 2000, we'll also continue to see the Russell 2000 come down and do its major move, essentially this uh, breakdown from this uh, uh, consolidation area or this little bear flag and uh, come down to this 1750 area or this uh, you know pivot high here near the uh, 1725. Now the uh, Russell 2000 is in a bear market down 25%, a little bit over 25% from its high here. So that uh, put it in a uh, bear market category. And the uh, Dow Jones Transportation did uh, make a little bit of a gain last week. 
uh, but it's still uh, getting near the uh, bear market uh, territories. Uh, lost a little bit over 18.5%, uh, somewhere around 18.5% from its high. So right now, we're still looking for this thing to chop, and uh, it could come back up and uh, test this uh, 38.2 at 15,705. But I'm still keeping an eye on this uh, lower level here, testing this uh, this low at 14,133. The Dow Jones Industrial also uh, in a uh, correction territory here and also printed a, a little bit of an outside candle last week. And right now, we're still looking for this thing to come down to this 32,000 area. Uh, if it's going to bounce, then we essentially are looking for this thing to uh, possibly come back up to this 38.2 and back test this 34,060 level. But I'm looking for this thing to come down, take out 32, and then possibly work its way down toward the uh, 29,000 area. Uh, because there's a uh, there's a gap down here that needs to be filled. The New York Stock Exchange, the uh, composite uh, index, went into a correction territory. It lost 10.8%, uh, so it's lost a little bit uh, more than 10%, and that puts it into a correction territory. Now, we're basically looking for this major move here from this uh, you know balance area, and we're talking about maybe somewhere around 15,223. So if it uh, bounces back up again, we essentially are looking for a possibility of testing these lows again. Right? That's uh, 15,775, this uh, these pivot level here. So uh, that's basically what we're looking for on the upside. And the downside uh, is the uh, 15,223. If it breaks that, then we are basically targeting this pivot high here, somewhere around 14,183. Here's the latest chart on the 10-year yield. As you can see, we were kind of one week, a little bit one week late because we were uh, thinking that we would see uh, 3% the previous week, but uh, last week we actually saw it came above the uh, 3%. And it closed out at 3.123% uh, for the week on the 10-year yield. And we haven't seen this level since 2018. And the 2018 high is uh, 3248 now, we did uh, have this major move from this cup and handle pattern, and it exceeded this 100% major move. So we have a 127 extension major move up at 3.369. So we could be uh, looking at a 3.5% on the 10 year before this thing might top out, and who knows? We could even see higher than that. So uh, definitely, this thing is not getting lower. Beware when we see a print of 9% or even a possibility of a 10% print on the CPI. And you could really see the fear in this market coming in when we see those kind of print and then notice how far behind the Fed is in tackling this inflation. And here we are looking at the US dollar. As you can see, the US dollar is getting at this level here that we have not seen since uh, 2020. And uh, basically connecting these high and establish some sort of upper trend line, we could see the dollar get up to somewhere around this 107 in the uh, near term. So uh, keep an eye on this 107. And looking at crude oil, remember uh, we we're talking about breaking back above this 38.2 at 102 level, and we could see this thing possibly work itself back up to this high and uh, take out 130. And I wouldn't be surprised if it take out 130, then uh, who knows, right? That 150 it definitely would be in play. And we might see that before end of 2022. You notice that uh, it pulled back to this 50% retracement level and got a nice bounce off of that. And right now it's getting back above this 38.2 uh, retracement level and making its way back up to this 110 area. And I um, wouldn't be surprised next week. We might see something at this area of this 120, 115, 120 area. And for silver, silver has continued to pull back. And I'm saying that uh, keep an eye on it uh, when it comes back down to this 22 uh, level. Right now, it's getting closer. Basically, I'm looking for the price action here when it get down here to see would it uh, give us a little bounce, uh, set up to a bounce like this, or would it continue to break down and come down to this uh, 16 and a half level. So we're going to keep an eye on that and see how it react when it uh, come back, uh, dip below this 22 and see do we get a little bit of a chop and then get bounced back up. So 
So I'm basically looking for something like this right here. And for the gold, uh, gold came down and tagged the, uh, or come close to uh, tagging the 78.6 retracement at uh, 1844. Right now it's uh, sitting just underneath this uh, 618 at uh, 1894. So let's see how, uh, how much of a chomp would it uh, be able to build a little bit of a support off of this uh, 1844, then that might be a uh, nice spot to uh, look for some sort of a swing long setup to at least get it back up to this level here. You know, we've got uh, a lot of these uh, retracement level. So definitely this 1929 is an interesting level uh, to scale off of if we could get some uh, swing set up here at 1844. As long as gold uh, is, uh, you know, holding above this trend line, then I think the uh, trend continues to remain on the uh, upside. Now let's take a look at the uh, ETF for the S&P 500, the SPY. Remember we were talking about this uh, uh, value area, this composite uh, profile value area. And essentially looking at the look above and fail, and then we trace back down to the value area low. And once you break this value area low, then we're essentially looking at a 1x extension of this value area, and that would bring it down to somewhere around this 395 area. And also, in addition to that, we have this Fibonacci retracement on the swing here with an extension of 272 down at the uh, 391, 392 area. So definitely that 395 is in the ballpark of this extension as well. So we'll continue to watch for the SPY to move down to this uh, uh, 395 area. And uh, also in addition to that, I'm going to show you the uh, market profile chart on the ES later on. You kind of give you some idea where there might be some clues that indicating that there's a high probability that the price of the uh, uh, S&P 500 and also the SPY will get down to near this 395 area. Now, of course, there could be some bounce, and if it bounces, we again will be uh, watching this uh, value area low here, and that would be somewhere around this uh, 124 area. And for the QQQ, the ETF for the NASDAQ 100, similar uh, setup. Right? Look above and fail, we trace back down to the uh, composite value area low. And now we basically are booking below that, and we're essentially watching for a retracement of 1x of this value area. So right now we're essentially looking for somewhere around 297. Okay? And uh, there is a, uh, a 272 extension at 292 area, and that is the uh, based on this Fibonacci swing here. Okay, so uh, definitely the uh, 297. Uh, area is in play right now. This uh, ex you know one x extension of the value area, and for the upside, if it decide to move back up, then we essentially looking at this three seventeen, essentially this low here to get back test. And looking at the IWM, the uh, ETF for the Russell two thousand, uh, last week it actually uh, retraced this range here on the extension down. Remember that two uh, also have this look above and fail, came down to the value area low, broke it, you know, kind of back tested back up here, that's last Wednesday, and then broke again and came down and tested this uh, extension here somewhere around this uh, 180.73 uh, area, 181 area. So right now we're essentially looking at this uh, 272 extension down at 177. That would be the next downside target. If it uh, get a nice bounce back up, then uh, look for this uh, 187.92. Essentially, this low get retest. On the screen here is a market profile chart for the E Mini S and P 500 future, the ES. I just want to point out a couple of things to uh, pay attention to and why it is uh, telling us there's a good possibility we could see the level below uh, last week's low. Last week, we essentially closed with what we call a poor low. And there's also some what we call unfinished business that was left from previous auction that need to be tested, such as the poor low back in May of 21. 
and also some single print that need to be filled. We also have this point of control, a couple of these point of control back in uh, April and this one here in March of uh, 2021 that also need to be tested. And those are levels below the 4,000 level, such as the, uh, the, the March 31st one is 3,978.75. So as you can see, there are quite a few of these lower level that will be like a magnet to attract the oxygen to uh, test these level, to come down and test these level. Now, there are some upside possibility because we also have quite a number of these, what we call the unfinished business of single prints that was put in in May, you know, just a few days ago last week. And then we also have some of these single print up here as well. And also a point of control, a naked point of control at 4211 that also need to be tagged. But right now with the uh, sentiment and the internal seems to be biased toward the downside, then we probably will see the uh, probability in favor of the price moving down the auction to auction down toward this 4,000 level and auctioning up at this 4,200 level and above. The uh, takeaway is that we, uh, you know, could be uh, looking at prices down here below the 4,000 level and possibly test down at the 3980 area before we uh, could be looking for some sort of a you know, sustainable bounce back up. In summary, the sentiment and the market internals are telling us to remain cautious as there are more downside to come. And the price action from the indexes are also warning us to beware of lower low. Now, I believe a lot of people are getting suckered by the lies that make them feel better and make them hopeful that they will recover their losses soon. Statements such as the Fed Chairman Jay Powell gave about the 0.75% height is not in the card. Remember, he was the guy that been telling you the lie that inflation is transitory. And also, he told you at the beginning of the year that the Fed does not plan to raise rate until 2023. And also he was the guy that scaled back to 25 basis point height in March instead of doing a 50 basis point. But I kind of what Jay Powell said in January that we will see a rate height in 2022. And I state that in one of my video back in the beginning of the year. And again, I want us to look for half a percent and even three quarter of a percent height and a possibility of an in-between FOMC meeting rate height back in March when I put out a video to warn us about that. So Jay Powell said three quarter of a percent height is not in the card. Well, maybe it's not in the card, but it doesn't preclude them from do well, maybe it's not in the card, but it doesn't prevent it from doing a half a percent in August and or October. And those are in-between meeting months. And watch the Fed panic when we see the CPI print a 9 or a 10% number. So don't be fooled by these BS. These people are trying to avoid creating a panic by telling us these lies. They know they have lost control on reining in inflation. Now they are just hoping and wishing something will happen and help prevent inflation from moving higher. I hope you find this video to be informative. And don't forget to smash that thumbs up to help me promote this video on YouTube. Thank you for watching and stay safe.